We welcome you into week eight of the Ken Sparks Show. I'm the voice of the Eagles, Adam Cavalier, alongside Carson Newman, head football coach, Ken Sparks. The Eagles pick up a 47-26 road victory over the North Greenville Crusaders. And Ken, a couple of milestones, a couple of things switched up for you uh, in that game. We'll begin with milestones. Brandon Baker uh, with the 77-yard day becomes the eighth tailback in Carson Newman history with more than 3,000 yards rushing in his career. Uh, had a 35-yard touchdown run. That's when he crested the 3,000-yard mark. Uh, we'll start with the individual stuff before moving on to the team. What's he meant uh, to your program uh, and especially three grand on the ground? Well, uh, Brandon is a special uh, talent. He, uh, he has a way of, uh, of uh, in this offense, of going north and south very quick, and he makes people miss. Uh, he uh, He's a great blocker. I think that's the thing that I appreciate most about him. And uh, he's a team player, and and uh, Brandon, it's been fun to watch Brandon grow up. Uh, you know, he came in here from Miami and, and uh, has made a lot of progress since he's been here, and I'm very really proud of him. Part of the story from the win over the Crusaders, balance again, really the first time we've seen true offensive balance for your team since uh, the opener against Wayne State. Uh, more than 200 yards passing. Anthony Eubanks has eight grabs for 132 yards. Uh, what did it take to get that level of uh, cohesion and consistency against the Crusaders? Well, anytime you have any kind of uh, uh, efficiency or success, it comes down to 11 people doing their job. You know, if 10 people, if one person doesn't, 10 people do, then you're not going to have the, the you know, the success. And it's, it starts off with protection. Uh, it starts off with winning the line of scrimmage. And I thought uh, we did a good job doing that uh, most of the time, not all the time. And I thought that um, uh, 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 DeAndre had a great uh, ball game throwing the football. Not all the time, but most of the time. Mm -hmm. And I thought uh, uh, I thought the mixture of the run and pass was very critical for us. Anthony uh, made some really great uh, yardage after catches. Yes. And uh, he uh, he's a special weapon. And uh, you know, with us having the injuries that we've had with um, with receiver and running back this year, mm -hmm. but especially right now with receiver. Uh, you know, it, it's uh, it's quite miraculous that we've gotten done what we've gotten done. We had a little freshman make two or three good catches, and and uh, uh, it's it's uh, it's been a blessing. Well, Carson Newman picks up the victory, 47-26 over North Greenville. We'll break down the first half when we get back after this on the Ken Spark Show. Back on the Ken Spark Show as Carson Newman pulls out a 47-26 victory. Over the North Greenville Crusaders, Ken, uh, you have a 24-13 lead going into the break after North Greenville really gashed you on the opening drive. Uh, how concerned were, were you after that opening possession? Well, I, I didn't like it at all. You know, uh, it was, uh, I don't think concerns the right word. <clears throat> and uh, uh, I don't know, I, I, I couldn't figure out uh, why it looked like we were playing uh, slower than they were. Mm -hmm. And uh but you got to remember, they got some really good yes. skilled people, and um, and you know, anytime you got the leading receiver in the nation, and, and we certainly didn't slow him down any, and uh, and then they got a receiver that I mean, a quarterback that, that does a great job. Uh, so you know, and then a running back that mixed it in real well, and he quick, and they he making people miss him, and there's a lot of times they were quick and we were slow. It looked like. And so, but it's great. It's uh, great that way that they came back and made some things happen after that. Yeah, you score 17 unanswered after that point. You bring up Freddie Martino. You say he did stuff against you. He did 11 catches for 102 yards, but that's 50 yards below his season average and four catches below his season average. So, what did you do to <laughs> limit him? <laughs> Am I supposed to be excited about a guy that catches 10 passes for over 100 yards against us? No, I, we uh, we knew he's going to be he's going to create problems for mm -hmm. us, and he, you know, they do a great job in formations and mixed matches and the motion and everything to get him on linebackers, and uh, and that's tough for a guy like that to be on a linebacker that's in there playing hand to hand combat, and then all once has to go out there in space and play, you know, play finesse football. And so, but 
but uh, the defense kept getting stronger as it went, and uh, uh, I think the thing that concerned me more than anything else uh, was when we started the second half to come out and not get points uh, on the first drive, mm -hmm. which I felt like it was very important for us to do yeah. right off the bat. So the first half, we give up a drive. The second half, we don't get a drive. And so it was not good f first five minutes of each half, which is very important to us. And it's been rare that that's – usually you've been very strong true. to start the ha both halves of football. That's true. We stopped ourselves. We, we cost ourselves two touchdowns or potentially two touchdowns, one on a five-yard penalty, motion penalty when we was going for it on fourth down, mm -hmm. and the other time uh, when we fumbled the football. And in space – and uh, was on our way, I think, yeah. to a good drive on that one. So, well, nonetheless, Carson Newman has the lead at the break, 24 to 13, and we break down the first half highlights. Hughes takes the shotgun, snap, keeps it, and did not pull William Alderman. Oh boy! Shot through like a cannon into the backfield, and Alderman blasts him down for a loss of five. Back to the three. He's been huge for Carson Newman of late. A couple sacks two weeks ago in the fumble recovery. Sack and a half last week. He's been great for Carson Newman. And coming through here big inside of the five-yard line. Takes the snap. Fakes the dive. Now rushes right. Thomas into the green. He's there. Touchdown, Carson Newman. DeAndre Thomas. Rode the dive out to the right, elected to pull it back, kept it himself around the right side, and the Eagles go ahead 9-7 to seven on the six-yard keeper by DeAndre Thomas. Thomas's 10th rushing touchdown of the season, a sack back. Third and five for Carson Newman. Thomas takes the snap, gives right side on a dive. Brandon Baker, Baker to the 20-10, racing along the right side. Hash, he gets not only the first down, he gets the touchdown. Touchdown, Carson Newman. Brandon Baker scoots in from 35 yards away, and the Eagles have a 16-7 lead over North Greenville. Three wide receiver set to the short side left, one up top for the Eagles. Thomas back to pass, throws the screen. Right side, Andy Hibbett has it in the backfield, has blockers along the right sideline, 50 and 40 into North Greenville territory. Cuts back, spins 35-30, and he's finally brought down at the 29-yard line. A career-long catch for Andy Hibbett as he's brought down by Barron at the 29. A 41-yard pickup for Hibbett. Great job. Ignani out there with a the block. Taylor out there with a the block for Carson Newman. Also, Eubanks, the best blocking wide receiver, according to DeAndre Thomas, maintaining his block down the football field. Right hash, Thomas under center, split backfield. Rifles, a slant over the middle of the field, complete at the 15, Eubanks. Sprints between the hashes, but he's caught before he can get to the goal line at the one by Wingfield. A 28-yard pickup for Anthony Eubanks. First and goal from the one for the Eagles, under two minutes to play. First half, 17-13. The Eagles have the lead. First and goal from the one for the Eagles. Thomas takes the snap, gives on a trap, right side, touchdown! Carson Newman, Tyron Douglas. It's been a while. He gets back into the end zone for the first time since the Brevard game. Thomas with his 38th career touchdown. And he gives the Eagles a 23-13 lead with 88 seconds left in the first half. Those are the first half highlights as Carson Newman takes a 24-13 lead at the break over North Greenville. Ken, a, you have that 24-13 lead at the break by virtue of an eight-play, 95-yard drive. How crucial was that to punch it in right before the half? Well, it was, if I remember right, it was 17-13 uh, when that happened. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and it was real critical because we needed to... Uh, we need to make some doubts in their minds, and we need to go in with something positive with us. And so uh, uh, we had a great call on screen play that uh, Coach uh, Turner and his staff uh, did, and then we had the slant pattern uh, with Eubanks that was huge, and Anthony did a great job of getting extra yardage out of it. And so uh, it happened pretty fast, and we yeah. were very glad to get it. And through the air, mind you, too. Yeah, a lot of it, yeah. You uh, You've talked about growth, getting better, maturing on and off the field. This season, you said you took a jump last week against Tusculum. Did you take a step this week against North Greenville? Well, I think with some individuals. I don't know. 
uh, as a team. And I want to tell you, we had we had all the odds against us mm -hmm. yesterday. You know, we and I don't need to go into a whole lot of details, but we had a lot of things that happened last week that was critical for us to to overcome and to respond like we need to. And I thought we did a really good job with that, even though. We were sloppy in places. I thought we did some really good things in, in other places. Well, we'll break down the second half when we get back after this on the Ken Sparks Show. Back on the Ken Sparks Show as Carson Newman picks up a 47-26 victory over the North Greenville Crusaders. I'm Adam Cavalier alongside Carson Newman head football coach Ken Sparks. Ken, you look at that second half, and you, you touched on it earlier. It looks to be a fat, fast start, but then you sputter in – the quote-unquote orange zone. Uh, North Greenville comes down, scores what looks to be a pivotal touchdown, but then blocked extra point, and Jared East Brown takes it back for two. How monumental was that? That was a huge two points, and uh, it made it more than, uh, you know, it, all at once they're a touchdown taking the lead, and now they're a touchdown just to get tied, and so it was it was huge, and uh, take it from a five-point game to a seven-point game, and and, I, and probably more than just the, the points, it was the mindset, you know, mm -hmm. that they worked like crazy to get a touchdown, and, and we don't work too hard to get two points out of it. So we, we, We've touched on special teams pretty frequently, and it, it seems like PAT field goal has been an adventure at, <laughs> ti at times this year uh, through no fault of Kurt Duncan uh, kicking the football. This is your first game without a missed PAT uh, and or field goal didn't have one blocked for the first time uh, all season. What caused that? Why was that? Well, I think uh, I think we're doing a little better job. Number one, uh, Kurt got the ball up a lot better. He only kicked one low one, and that was good. But he struggled a little bit on a couple of kickoffs, and he didn't putt very well this mm -hmm. time. And so, uh, Kurt, uh, since the third, second, third ball game, has has uh, picked. Uh, one little thing to to not be exactly right on and so uh, uh he'll he'll get it all worked out because he's he's a special talent yeah you you look at the fourth quarter you put up 21 points what was the what was the the blocked pat was that the turning point that uh, really spent things your way i think it was, had a, a lot bigger factor than most two point yeah uh, possibilities i thought it i thought it had a big impact how big were the lack of penalties for you? A season low five called for just 41 yards. Well, it was good, but the ones we had would have one. You know, it don't take but one to get beat. Mm -hmm. You know, the, and uh, and we had one that cost us probably a touchdown drive. I'm not sure that it ended up in a touchdown, but it would have been points, I think. And uh, so, you know, you can't give away points by by silly penalties. And uh, and I thought the great uh, interception was a big turning point. Uh, yeah. For the siege of ours to do it another time, you know, to get his hands on a pass the, from the defensive mm -hmm. end, I thought was pretty good. And then William Alderman to be in the backfield <laughs> as well to have a shot That's right. at, at the pick. What, what, what about the job that those two have done at defensive end? Well, they're getting better. Uh, we still uh, need to do better. We still got some work to do, but they're getting better. And, and I think, uh, you know, we just got to get consistency. We got to get where everybody's getting better all the time, you know. And, and we're not there yet, but that's the reason we're still practicing, the reason we're still playing. Eagles wrap up a 47-26 win over North Greenville, and we take a look at the second half highlights. Gravely on for the point after. It's blocked. Carson Newman recovers it. He's running along the left sideline. 30, 20, 10, a defensive extra point. It was Jared East Brown who recovered it and raised it all the way down the left sideline. A defensive PAT gives Carson Newman two points and a seven point lead. 26 to 19 with 26 seconds left in the third quarter. My word, how about that? Sean Rawson with the block field goal came screaming through the line, was able to get his right hand on it. A nice job by Rawson. Split backfield. Thomas takes the snap, rushes right, ducks it. Thomas stretches for the end zone, dives, got it! Touchdown, Carson Newman. DeAndre Thomas with his second score of the day. Gets into the end zone on the right side. 
and Carson Newman takes a 32-19 lead with 13.05 left in the fourth quarter. Two wide set to the left. Thomas under center split backfield. Thomas will take it, run it around the left side. Thomas dives. He's into the end zone. Touchdown, Carson Newman. DeAndre Thomas with his first three-touchdown game of his career. And Carson Newman takes a 39-26 lead over North Greenville. Third down, six to go for the Eagles from the North Greenville 12. Thomas back to pass. Throws a pass to Hibbett right side. Hibbett into the boundary. Scoops to the end zone. Touchdown, Carson Newman. Andy Hibbett with his first career receiving touchdown. This one from 12 yards away, 46-26. Carson Newman leads with 2-13 left in the fourth quarter. That snaps a six-week drought where Carson Newman had failed to pass for a touchdown its longest this century. Those are the second half highlights as Carson Newman wins its fourth consecutive contest with a 47-26 victory over North Greenville. When we come back, we put the Eagle spotlight on Michael Serge Bali. Back on the Ken Sparks Show as the Eagles pick up a 47-26 victory over North Greenville. Time now for our Eagle Spotlight. And this week, Michael Watrang shines it on Michael Serge Bali. Senior defensive tackle Michael Serge Bali played in five games in 2010 for the Eagles. He would not see the field again until 2012 due to academic issues. It was hard, man. Like it, it was it was rough because I I don't know, like I couldn't even explain how bad it was because I, I just missed the fact that I wasn't playing football anymore and I knew that I had to do something just to change that. And so I went, I just jumped back on top of it and started getting better grades and, and just, just continue to grow from there. Despite starting all 12 games in 2012, former teammate and current assistant defensive line coach Zach Fleming said it was a struggle for Serge Bali. He's probably about 50, 60 pounds heavier. Uh, and he had back issues all year. Uh, couldn't hardly get in the stance, get off the ball. Uh, and so this offseason, he did a weight loss program, came back. And, and as a result, you, he's a quicker, faster surge. Um, and he's able to push those guys to really get better. Uh, and being with new weight, and he's in better shape, better health, uh, he's staying healthier too. Serge Bali has started 20 consecutive games for the Eagles, the longest streak among any current defensive player. It's a true testament to the determination of the Sandersville, Georgia native. One of the phrases that I kept in my head last year is, we all we got. And, and I really, that's really just, I like, you know, I got to play through everything. So every, like, little bump, scrape, my back is really bad. There's the points in the game where, like, I had to take, like, six or seven ibuprofen just not to just feel it as bad as it was. And it, I just played through it. I mean, I just... I just knew that I had to. If not, there was like nobody else there. And if we did, it was just only it was only like four of us. So we I had to fight and to make sure that you know my teammates won't have to suffer. Serge Bali spent this past summer shaping his body. He said that it feels like freshman year all over again as he lost almost 60 pounds to improve his speed. His story is inspirational to all of his teammates, including freshman defensive end Joey Maxberry. I asked him about his story, and he really told me what went on, and it just motivates me to, you know, not take things for granted, to really work hard every day, and to seize the moment, man, because, you know, days go by fast around here, and you can't take anything for granted. You really have to take advantage of your opportunities, so that's what I really learned from Serge the most. The six foot 300 pounder did not want to let his teammates down anymore. Junior defensive end William Alderman believes that everyone has learned from Serge's experience. Even when we go through hard times, even when classes seem like impossible, like you can always make it, you can always fight to the next level. And just the productivity on and off the field that he's had is really just goes to show just how much of a man he really is and how much he's grown up since he's been here. And it's, it's really a joy to see the little bit that I have seen and then also hearing the stories that back up just from what you see on the field and off the field. So it's great. It may not have been the easiest road for Serge Bali, but his time at Carson Newman has helped put his life in perspective. All the hard work, hard work we do here, I mean, in, in the longer run, it will pay off. All the, all the discipline on waking up 6 o'clock in the morning, 5 o'clock in the morning, the exhausting practice, uh, the constant hitting. I mean, practice when you're not supposed to be practicing. I mean, it's, it's just all a learning process throughout life. 
and what I will take from that from for the rest of my life, I'll, I'll just keep that. That hard work will pay off. Carson Newman's mission is to help students reach their full potential. While Serge Bali didn't take the simplest route, there's no question that his time here will help him be successful in whatever he does. For the Ken Sparks Show, I'm Michael Watrang. Thanks very much, Michael and Ken. Michael Serge Bali. Great story. I, I, I think we were talking about it during the break. If you had to guess the defensive player with the most consecutive starts, 20 in a row for Michael Serge Bali. And I, I don't think he's not one that fills up the stat sheet, but he certainly fills up holes on the front of that he line. He does. He made some big plays Saturday. And um, he's getting better, you know, believe it or not. And he started off and on now for or at least played significantly for three years. And uh, <clears throat> I tell you what I like about him is, you know, he's uh, he's he's had a lot of battles and he has won the battles. Uh, he had to pass a whole bunch of hours one year to be eligible and he did that. And then he had to, uh, he had, to, uh, you know, he, financially it's been a struggle the whole time. And, and to see how he's sacrificed personally, how he's worked two or three jobs uh, in order to, you know, to be able to stay financially in school, and I just have a lot of respect for Michael. He's, he's, uh, he don't say much, uh, but everybody knows he's solid. When you talk about fighting battles, you got a big one this week. Uh, nationally ranked Lenore Ryan, you'll head to Hickory for a contest with the Bears, top defense in the league, but uh, Lenore Ryan comes off of a tough contest with Barzil. What challenges is that? LR club pose for you? Well, I think they're better than they were last year. And, uh, you know, last year it was nip and tuck uh, mm -hmm. when we played against them. And, and I think, uh, uh, you know, I, they've got all the psychological uh, edges. Uh, and so we just got to go play. You know, we got to continue to improve, continue to get better, and and uh, work, work at it like we need to work at it. All right, King, congratulations on career victory 315 with the victory over North Greenville. I appreciate it, and, and thank you, coaches and players that made it possible. That's Carson Newman head football coach Ken Sparks. I'm the voice of the Eagles, Adam Cavalier. This has been the Ken Sparks Show. Thanks for watching.